Hello everyone out there. Happy Thursday. Um, there may be a couple of new ones of you out there because we seem to have accumulated quite a few extra followers in the last week. So I would like to welcome you um, if you're new to some of my lives. Most Thursdays I do pop in here and if you have any questions you want to ask me on any particular topics just pop them up there and I'll answer as we go through. I usually have something that I want to talk about that we've been kind of working on or thinking about during the week so that's usually where where it ends up going. Um, you may have noticed some of you last week that our Celtic Knits Club 20, 22 I was going to say 21 my years are getting all confused went live last weekend so it was really really nice to see um, a lot of you who popped in there for the second and several for the third year so it's really exciting because obviously what we're doing and the patterns we're going up and just the whole club is something you're enjoying um, and in fact I've had a few people come on and say that actually getting the club and the patterns saved 2021 for them and actually kept them going so that's just lovely to hear and thank you <laughs> Um, it's it's really really nice to know that what we're doing is being appreciated and enjoyed and yeah it's wonderful so as I was saying on the little preview for this I was going to give a little tour of the shop because Laura who's upstairs winding yarn right now I might be mean and ask her to come down in a second but she's been very busy for the last couple of days and we've been reorganizing the shop space and it's actually a really cozy little space now um, I'm not sure if it's going to let, oh, well, it'll let me turn this around. So I'm going to turn the camera around and I'll just do a very quick whiz around the shop. And if there's something you want me to linger on, I will, um, I'll let you know. Uh, someone's saying you love my cardigan. Oh, thank you. This is my Shaniko on colder days. It's my go-to. It's, it's like an overcoat, big cabled overcoat, very cozy. So definitely my go-to cozy weather one. So let me see if I can find um, how to go. And t I thought I had seen it, of course, as I was talking, I went and um, lost how to turn things around here. Um, here we go, just found it. Yeah, perfect. All right, that is a boring part of the shop, but here we go. We start off here. Um, I love this section here. It's just the coral minis, but it's just a wall of color. And over here, one, the first of the Celtic Knits Club hats, notebooks, books. Back here, this is a new section that we've put up that is really, really fun. It's our kits. We've been kitting up some of our shawls and sweaters. And down here, just a few more shawls as well. Um, here's all the Nua, Nua Sport Annual Worsted. Samples for people to try on. This chair here is going to be going away soon. <laughs> We've got, this is fun new stuff. We've actually just gone into the shop. I'll show you in a bit more detail next week, but it's just, it's the fra more Franca. Over here, past the door here, we've got Nua. And if I come to the other side here, Nua Worsted. And swing down here is Cumulus and Franca, Coral. And we have got just stacks of books and samples and if you need a place to sit right here this is a cute little display that just went up it's all about socks our box of socks and talking about knitting socks and then the back of it it goes all the way from our Blasta through to Lost to Light socks decay and um, we're just putting a little baby section in over here and we will shortly have some kits underneath. So that is our, uh, here, let me figure out how to turn this back around again. I swear it's like I've never, um, I've never actually flopped them back and forth here. So it's not behaving very well for me. Okay, it will come back around. Maybe I should just go to the other side. Here we go, got it. I swear. <laughs> It doesn't show the um, the option to turn it around is the problem is where I was running into issues. So if you have any questions and stuff that we kind of popped around, just give me a shout, let me know. So that is the main thing I wanted to show you because if you're close to Cork or if you know anybody who's down here and wants to pop in and take a look, we're now open Monday to Friday from 10 until 3. So um, yeah, just drop in. 
So what I wanted to show you here is I've got a stack of samples and anyone who is in the Seasons Club will know that these are the patterns that came with the Seasons Club. So I'll give you a little bit of a preview because the main thing with this is it was all done in newer worsted and newer worsted comes in there's enough colors that when you play with them together they'll all complement each other but still create a little bit um, of a jump. Uh, will Open Studio Day be back? Um, it will eventually. Right now, the courtesy of COVID, we actually can't, of course, because um, I'm not really in a position to start doing COVID passes and all the rest of it. So when it is safe to do so and have people in here and sit and having coffee, yes, we absolutely will. For now, it's like it obviously is everyone's welcome, but um, the, the coffee drink, you will have to wait, I'm afraid, <laughs> in our indoor space. Um, but with our newer worsted, um, yeah, the colors here, you can see they all combine very well together. So what we did with the club is there was three different options which put in a kind of a general color family, but had enough contrast so that you could do some playing with color work. Because color work often, there's people who really love color work, but for a lot of people, it's actually quite intimidating. So this was about having just a little pre-selected set of colors and then just playing within that and seeing what ones you like uh, to play together. The first one here, I'm actually very fond of. This is a cowl and you can see this is the feather wave cowl. And the background is a darker color. And then I took three contrast colors and these are just a slip stitch pattern um, that's very straightforward to work, but just creates this real bright pops of color. And I've opted to go for three colors that are repeated again. But this is something where you could do it all one color. You could just alternate between two. You could have every one of the contrast colors working through. So there's a lot of possibilities. And then it finishes at the top with a folded hem and I cord that comes through the actual opening here. And this gives you the option of either keeping it snug or you can make it as a hat because I was even able to pull it up with my hair and keep the ponytail within the hat as well. So there's a lot of different ways that this can be worn. And I didn't I didn't think I would actually like it as a hat when I put it on. We took the photographs and like, oh, that's actually really handy. So it is more versatile than I expected. And I think that everyone should have one of these in the wardrobe. So the next one is just a hat, <laughs> but there are a couple of different options. So this one is the wobble wave hat. And you can see the three colors here. I had two lighter ones in the background that were striping as you go up and then a darker color for the color work. Now, just in terms of how colors can be played with and people can try out different things. Um, my my sample, uh, some of my not the sample knitters, the test knitters, they actually did it so that they flipped it around and used the lighter color for this. And it actually looked really interesting. So. The main thing with this is that you want contrast between the background and, and the pattern color, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the pattern color has to be the dark one. It can also be the light one. Now this is one version where there's no fold, but I've got a second one as well where I did half of it in the second color, in the, the second background color, where it can be folded, which I do find it can be very cozy for if you end up with some of the cold ears. If you've got a folded brin, you've got the option of pulling it down and keeping it over your ears. So this has got a couple of different options as well. And oh, one other thing is if you wanted to keep it even simpler than that, you could even remove the stripes in the background and keep just two colors and a solid color in the background and just this dramatic color, um, the wave going up. I think this is actually a good one. If you're a new color work knitter, it's not a very difficult chart. And because it's in worsted weight, the stitches are fairly big. And I think hats or anything like that are very straightforward to work because you're doing it in the round. You're not trying, it's not going to be, you know, it'll fit the needle size. So you're not messing with it. And you can also see here, you're not doing decreases in the color work because it all becomes solid color when you're actually at the crown. So the color work is all just straight and then you just come to the decreases at the top. So a good starter color work pattern, I think there. And then the final, one of the club. You put it on. Cold day here would actually be a good one. This is the wrong way around because I've got, you see the, the join, the start of it is on this side 
and I've actually got them matched up so that the top of the mitt has got it flat and then you start with the thumb on the other side on that one. So this is darker colors again and what you can actually see here is, I, hopefully you can see it, um, there's just very very small amounts of stranded color work and then in the next row you're working purl stitches so it's actually creating this really interesting um, effect as you're working through. Similar to the bohus knitting technique, obviously it is not bohus because that has got a lot more going on where you're also talking about very fine yarn, often more than two colors in one row. It's just taking one facet of it, which would be using purl stitches with stranded color work to kind of blend the colors and create interesting um, effects. And then the rest of this is just very simple stranded, again combined with garter stitch, which creates a little bit of texture in the knitting because with stockinette stitch, it's going to be just, it's a flat surface. If you're changing colors, that's all you've got going on is the colors changing. With this, it's a textured color work and you're bringing purl stitches in and you're using that to combine with the, um, with the changes in the color, which just gives it a little bit more depth. Um, I think it's why I like the idea of the bohus or textured color work in the same way that I like cables, that instead of having a flat surface, you've got a little bit of variation in the height of the surface and a little bit of texture going on. So you may remember I've got a sweater called um, the Boa sweater that I did for um, the, um, the Lina magazine a couple of years ago. Same kind of thing, it was, all, it was in the sports weight instead, but it just had a color work pattern going across here and used some kind of strategically paced purl stitches that blurred the court, the lines and gave a little bit of texture and color blending going on. So those ones are the three from the autumn, um, from the autumn seasons club. Um, and anyone who is part of that, and as you can probably imagine, because it's a seasons club, it will be opening up seasonally. And the next one is going to be coming along in December. So everyone's different. Everyone's going to use a different yarn. The type of pattern and the technique that will be covered will be different. But other than that, the format will be the same. Um, so if you've any more questions about that or what's around the shop or opening hours or anything like that, pop them up. If I don't get them here in the live, because uh, we're kind of starting to wind down a little bit now, you can still just put them into the comments and we'll answer them as we get through. So thank you very much for joining me today. And I want to say goodbye for another Thursday and see you next week. Should be back at uh, 2.30 next week. I just needed to make it a little earlier this week, a uh, half hour earlier. Although I suspect because we have changed our hour but in the US it has not changed yet. So there's actually a four hour difference or I've, it's almost like I've hedged my bets and sit somewhere in the middle and four and a half hour difference. <laughs> anyway, bye everyone.